are here to do a little bit of explaining on this new canon. I'm here with Budget Ed Budget XCOM, as we call her. Uh, and this was uh, the request by Bread. So basically, he wanted a canon that can have the creepers under the bedrock. So from here, you can have five full layers of bedrock. But all the TNT deepers are underneath, and the only thing that would be above the bedrock level would be the aligners and the basket. So this was a actually quite a fast project to make. Um, but there's a lot of interesting technology that comes with this cannon. So first thing um, is the fact that our deepers are actually rotated. So unlike uh, normal FTLs, where you normally would have your aligner facing this way compared to the deepers, uh, we actually needed to rotate our aligner because it didn't fit in between. So I decided to just rotate it instead, plus I like the way that the dupers look this way. So this is now the new setup for this cannon. Yes, so uh, the next thing uh, is actually a newer way of encoding. I've tried to do this on a couple of cannons. I believe I've done it on uh, currently just the um, Void 360 cannon and this one. So this is basically a faster way of transmitting the encoding method uh, by not using hex, but by just choosing the block that you need, and whenever you're ready, just pull so pistons up. So it eliminates like, I don't know, roughly like 10 game ticks uh, from the encoding method. So using the rails here is actually quite a decent optimization, even though it might be a little bit more expensive. Uh, uh, also, the dupers have one less pin. So uh, on the usual uh, dupers, you normally have, for the first side, you have uh, pins one through four to cover the first half of the first duper, and then you have another pin for, to just toggle the second half. Uh, but this one, you can actually just fit uh, 15 hex lines for the whole duper, or I think it's 14 actually. Uh, so this signal strength should be depleted to one, I believe. Oh no, 14. Oh wait, did we replace this? Oh, I don't... Yeah, I think we repasted this. Yeah, that might be an issue. But, um... So basically, these comparators are bugged. But that's fine. So, uh... With this, you need one less pin. So, uh... One pin less on the... On the, uh, on the pink side. And one pin less on the blue side. So... Uh... The encoding is also pretty much the same as any other canon. So you have, uh... Basically, one through eight TNT. Then... Uh, or sorry, that's for the uh, default module. Then you have the 11 through 88, which is for the first module. Then you have multiples of your duper amount. So each duper is 154 TNT. And you can go up to 1,232 TNT. For that, you need about 15 dupers. Uh, which you actually can fit in in your full render distance, because unlike uh, most other dupers, these ones are actually 15 wide tileable, whereas other dupers tend to be 16. Um, I'm sure that if you align this cannon right with like chunk borders and everything, you will not have an issue with the the alignment, because uh, basically the reason that current cannons are built 16 wide tileable is basically there's a multiple of two issue with chunks, so if I'm just going to show this on my screen. Uh, but basically, if this chunk were to here, if one of these chunks was a multiple of 2, so 2, 4, 8, uh, 16, 64, 32, whatever it is, all the multiples, basically, it can cause issues. Uh, but if you don't have TNT on this border still, you're fine. So again, if, if as long as you're smart enough to order them correctly, you'll be perfectly fine. Uh, other than that, uh, one of the newer things is the panel. So again, this is the same one that we use for Void 360. It is the trapdoor GUI panel that I made. Uh, and another nice thing about this is the corner trapdoors. So these ones are actually the encoding buttons. You'll notice that we don't have a note block. Yes, Void 360 explanation will be soon. But uh, we don't have a, any sort of button to encode the cannon. So we actually just use the corner trapdoors here. Uh, just because I think that it's nicer, you could just immediately select your destination and then hit encode. Uh, that's just the way that I prefer to do it, so that's what I left it as. Uh, the aligner, uh, this one is my newest version of my aligner, so this is 185 game ticks, I believe. 
there is another version that's 123 game ticks, but that one's a little bit um, too fast, so we can't activate the TNT in time. Yeah, it's a, it has a little bit of an issue. But uh, that's basically how the aligner works. Uh, but one thing that I also want to go over is the actual concept of the cannon itself. So how do we get the TNT up? Well, all the TNT from both sides... Um, I, I guess I could, first of all, explain how the TNT works in the baskets. So first thing is, you land TNT right around here, just right before you get that step up from the wall. Uh, yes, it was definitely inspired by a height individual. Um, and basically, you align the TNT right beside this uh, wall here for the first basket. So you use the walls for that one to align it. Then you do the second basket, which would be aligned against a fence. And when you're when you're aligning against the fence, you basically get this step up effect, where you're halfway up the block. So this means that you can shoot the TNT up as well. Now. Uh, when TNT is not on a service, it has less friction. So basically, what uh what it, what it can do is the TNT bounces up against the slime block here. Basically, this TNT here lands. Uh, or sorry, so this piston is basically extended. Uh, at the time of when this TNT is gonna explode, so the first one is a little lower, and it's the the first way that or sorry, so the way that TNT is processed basically, uh. It goes Y momentum first, then I forget which horizontal plane it is, but it's a horizontal plane after. So the important thing is Y axis goes first. So what's going to happen is the TNT is immediately going to be delivered all of its Y momentum, uh, which will hit up against the slime and make it frictionlessly basically flying through the air. So now it's going to get its horizontal momentum and go forward in the same tick and it's going to land right up against here. At the same time, we have... Uh, what, uh, sorry, so we have this TNT duper. This is the 11 TNT duper. Uh, so this one dupes this specific amount of TNT. That'll also merge uh, onto this block, uh, which will be with the propellant TNT. So the propellant is basically landing uh, aligned to a wall here instead of the fence gate. So it will slide straight down, whereas the TNT with a line to the fence would not. It would just land right here and stay kind of just barely on the wall. So now the propellant is landing up against the fences here, or up against the walls, sorry. And then the uh, actual payload of the TNT is sitting right up against the fences, but on the wall. So that's kind of the way that we separate them. And then once they're in their piles, they get shot up, uh, hit the trapdoors, and then they fall into the basket. Sometimes they need further alignment. So you just push out the piston, extend it, retract it, and then pull it back in. And that's basically the way that we uh, uh, use the aligners to pretty much get perfect alignment. Um, so I guess Chez, if you want to activate it, so you can see all the TNT goes and it falls up against here. Uh, and if we were to activate the big duper, I'm not going to do it now, but um, basically the TNT would be aligned to these fences. Uh, this one here would actually be pushed up against this block here, so it would fall here. And then the slime would push it back once the propellant is ready. And that's basically how we get the TNT to get shot upwards. So, oh. Oh, Chez, this has a, uh, what do you call it? The comparator <laughs> here. Okay, activate it. So here you can see it lands right here. Uh, and once the, t the propellant TNT is ready, it would be shot over. So that's basically how that part of the cannon works. Um, so, First goes the propellant, then uh, I think around 30 game picks later, the actual TNT goes, and that's basically how you loop everything together. So, uh, with that, that's pretty much how the whole TNT system works. But the aligners are very special, because you can get both sides of TNT, including the 11 dupers, all into one corner. So, 
in normal, or I, I guess in XCOM's FTL, and I'm just going to use that one as an example first, um, there are two binary bits. So these binary bits control the direction. So you can either have TNT here, you can have it here, you can have it here, or here. Those are your only four options. Then I had my regular cannon uh, ones, where you can have it uh, like this, you can have it like this, uh, you can have it like this, and basically like all, all the other options from XCOM, and you can also have it in two corners, or sorry, uh, in two of the corners, you can have all the TNT uh, allocated, so you can have it either just in this corner, or just in this corner. So you can't have it in the corners where there was a slime block, because uh, you can't ricochet uh, this slime block over, or sorry, you can't basically propel the TNT over into this corner with just one slime block. That was the issue with the previous aligners, but with these ones, now we align them twice. So here, we give them uh, a coordinate on the x-axis, that's what this one is. So here you give uh, x-axis with this slime block here, and then once you're up above, you control their uh, z-axis by aligning them in this direction. And with that, you can get individually each quantity of TNT into a specific corner. And that was kind of a new thing with this cannon, and nobody's really done that before. So it was kind of a new thing that I wanted to try, and seeing that it needed a line that's above the bedrock, it seemed like the perfect time to do it. So the next thing uh, I guess I can show is a cool trick that I figured out with the aligners or at least the aligners above the bedrock. This only works for two directions, but there is something finicky that you can do. I just need to try and remember how to program it. I think it's like this. Let's see if I can do this. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay. So... See, did we program this right? That one's in. That one's in. Yes. Okay. So you programmed it correctly. Uh, yeah, you can put as much TNT as you want. Because, oh, my client is being weird. We just need a little bit of TNT each side. That's it. Oh, wait. Because he broke a boat. Oh god. Okay. There. <laughs> okay, it's 11 TNT both sides right now. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a Ender Pearl. I'm going to do pick rate 2. Or actually, yeah, uh, Chez, if you want to go through. Go ahead. That's going to move it to grade 20. Just for a second. Okay, so here you get the, the TNT being merged. Uh, now you can see the TNT hitbox is a little bit big, that's just because they're aligned differently. So now it gets shot up. And this is the special part with the aligners. Uh... Oh. That work. Oh, it had an extra tick. Oh my god, okay. I accidentally re ticked a repeater. That's annoying. Why is all this activated? Yeah. That's fine. Don't worry. I'm just gonna shoot now. Okay, so now you can see the TNT got aligned a little differently. Here in these directions, the TNT got put basically uh, kind of in the middle of these blocks. And the reason that it does this is because both of these direction pins are programmed. So when the slime accelerates it, it won't hit up against the fence, but it'll hit up against the slime block. Um, now, this is dangerous uh, because the way that TNT can kind of update, it can propel itself backward into this corner again. So. This might not work properly, and it will not be included on the calculator because it's way too hard to program. 
Um, but this is doable for this direction and this direction. You can't do it for these ones because it's just not how the aligner works. But yeah, that's uh, kind of a cool trick, but uh, it's basically just a way to make your TNT be worth more on the axis. Um, uh, it's not like too worth it to do, to be honest. I wouldn't uh, do it because it's just not worth it. You're going to have issues with the TNT accelerating itself back into the corners and yeah, it's, it's just very problematic. So while it is a possibility and technically this is the most advanced aligner yet, um, I would not recommend using it in that way because um, it's just not its intended purpose. But yeah, so that's how the aligner works. Uh, next, I guess I'm actually going to move over here because I want to show how to load in the Lightmatic. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to grab your Lightmatic V2.7, I believe it is. Yep, so UFDL V2.7. You're going to grab the Lightmatic, Same, change tick rate. Uh, now this has a lot of subregions just because I wanted everything to be changeable. So if you do chest loading, you can easily take out the hex lines uh, and everything. Yeah, we made a lot of schematics of this because, yeah. Uh, but basically, everything uh, above here with the selection boxes needs to be the blocks that it says. So even in these areas, it needs to be air. Uh, these ones, it needs to have the aligners obviously going through the bedrock. And yeah. So... That's kind of how that bit works. Obviously, here's the basket. Uh, but yeah, so the first thing that you're going to do after you load in the Lightmatic is you're going to go into schematic, uh, what do you call it, schematic placements, hit configure, then change this value here to 73. That is the definite value that you want that number at. And now what will happen is uh, the, the bedrock will be in the perfect height for the TNT to be accelerated right through, assuming that you have these holes. So th this will fit your bedrock perfectly, assuming that you're doing this on the nether, because where else would you uh, work? Or, uh, sorry, wh wh what else would you put this cannon height at? Is that the wrong height? Wait, what's at the wrong height? Oh, no, the, the cannon will work. It's just, yeah. It's just, uh, this is the, the height that's made for it. But yeah, so I guess let's actually move this a little bit away. I should also say the cannon does not need to be chunk aligned, assuming that you just do the multiple of two rule and make sure that you're going to be safe from that. It'll be perfectly fine. So I'm going to paste it over here. I'm out quite a bit, so I'm pretty sure I won't have the multiple of two rule being too effective. So obviously, if you're pasting this in, make sure that you have fill updates set to false, because otherwise it can do some things. Uh, okay, so that's the placement now. And this is basically your finished cannon. Uh, I guess we can do items. So the, the first thing you're going to do, I recommend using iron nuggets. They're just a nice item to use. You're going to come down to this area here, just below, kind of the almost the middle of the panel. And you're going to go into this hopper here. This one, uh, the sign says it, but it needs seven items, I believe it was. Or six or seven items. I'm just going to put in seven. Um, but yeah, so it's the first hopper here. Uh, the one with the butted piston, basically. Uh, then you're going to move up. So all the way up, like basically follow this retraction line here. You're going to go all the way up until this point, and you'll find these two droppers here. So basically, this signal strength here is 1, 2, then we want these ones to be 4 and 8. So to do that, what we do, we put in two stacks of items in the first one, the one beside the cauldron, and then here we put in uh, five stacks of items. We do the same for the ones that are away from it on the blue side. And you follow that for every single uh, dropper with collagen setup you see. So up here you also have one. Beautiful. Okay. And last ones, I think. Oh god. A little bit too far. Okay. 
So yeah, uh, basically now that all the items are put in, I think we did these ones. No, we did not. Okay, quickly put in these. Okay, so now all the items should be in, I think, right? Yeah, okay. All the items are now in, so the cannon is pretty much ready for use. You just need to, uh, obviously put in your destination. Um, I will say you can also use this for, uh, return cannons. So on Hypnos, uh, we use underground cannons for, well, c currently on EPS and also for Mushroom. Uh, the Mushroom one is just being built up right now. Uh, but basically, what you would do is you just take the bottom layer of the floor here, uh, and you take a light matic with the rest of the aligner. I also did the, uh, what do you call it, the programming bits here. I would do the same, but it's up to you. Um, and obviously build up the dupers as the light matic shows. Uh, and you could pretty much use this as just a, re a regular return cannon. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much how the cannon works. Um, Penta will probably be releasing his calculator in the next few days. I'll leave a link to his GitHub for that. Uh, also, yeah, thank you so much for Chez for doing the edit. And uh, yeah, thank you. Bye. Chez, say bye.